Hi guys, today we're going to talk about nutrients in the reef tank and whether you should care all that much about nitrates and phosphates. Hi guys, today I'm going to do a video that I've been wanting to do for the last six months or so. Uh, but I've been doing a bit of an experiment with my tank and uh, and I wanted to see how the results will go. So uh, the the video is about nitrates and phosphates. And for me and I think many of you, when we started reefing, uh, nitrates and phosphates are were like dirty words, right? They're nitrates and phosphates are dirty chemicals that we should try to kind of eliminate or reduce as much as possible in our aquarium. And, you know, just go into Google, put nitrates or phosphates, and I guarantee you that uh, the first few videos that you're going to hit is how to control phosphates or how to reduce phosphates in your tank, like you see here, how to get rid of phosphates. Uh, same for nitrates, right? How to lower nitrates, what's the best way to remove your nitrates. Uh, so it, it's safe to say that uh, the reefing community has been kind of obsessed over limiting nutrients. Uh, and when I started reefing, uh, I, you know, I, I had the same obsession, you know, so I, I tried to do my best to uh, get a really good skimmer, uh, to have uh, uh, biological media like Ciparax uh, uh, or, uh, or uh, Matrix that will uh, remove the nitrates in my water system. You try not to feed too much. Uh, you, and on the phosphate side, right, I, I ran a GFO, I experimented with carbon dosing. So I'm, you know, I'm sure many of you have similar ideas and approaches. Uh, and, and I did all of that, yet I never could manage to kind of completely eliminate my nitrates and the tank never looked great. So the first year of my tank when I was trying to do uh, a great job at l limiting nutrients, uh, I just had problems after problems after problems. Uh, and and I was getting frustrated in the process because it, it just seems like nothing was working. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the, <laughs> uh, the best thing, I, I'll leave, you know, it's, I'm going to say this, but the best thing that happened to me was me getting Dinos. And I, I know what you guys are thinking. This guy's crazy. How could like getting Dinos be uh, a good thing? But part of my... Dino treatment, and you know, I'm gonna send a link to my video here um, uh, on how I beat Dino about a year ago. Was to essentially just elevate nutrients in my tank. So I, I let nitrates go up high, and and I, I actually dosed phosphates, uh, uh, phosphorus to increase my phosphates. And my tank for the last year uh, has been uh, doing really great uh, despite the high nitrates and phosphates. So. Uh, this is why I wanted to do this video is is to kind of get a discussion going and to also share with you some new research that I've discovered about nitrates and phosphates and their consequences on uh, corals and their uh, uh, and their symbionts that their algal symbi symbionts. All right. So before we uh, talk about the science, let's just talk about what the community currently knows about uh nitrates and phosphates. So uh, if you're like me and, and you Google anything chemistry related, undoubtedly you're going to hit up uh, on Randy Holmes uh, Farley's websites and, and uh, his forum posts. Uh, Randy, if you're watching this, uh, thank you. That I, I think on behalf of me and all the other aquas out there, your, your knowledge has been instrumental in, in helping us understand uh, uh, the importance of water chemistry in, uh, in the reef aquarium. So uh, Randy has uh, two very uh, popular uh, pages on phosphates and nitrates. And uh, the, essentially the, the idea is that we, uh, uh, we don't want to have high phosphates because they directly inhibit calcification. Also, the uh, phosphate is a limiting nutrient growth for algae. So uh, you have excess phosphates and you end up with high algae but also you indirectly inhibit calcification. And, and Randy, if you read this uh, site, that, uh, you know, if you look at this website and you read lower in this page, Randy has actually referenced about two or three papers uh, that did experiments where they've manipulated phosphates and had and measured uh, coral calcification. So th there is a little bit of science supporting this. 
so here here's the nitrate bit this is again randy's uh, uh randy's article uh so uh, high nitrates is associated with algae growth uh and it's known to elevate uh, uh elevated levels of nitrogen could spur the growth of zothanxeli uh which in turn can make corals appear brown and actually decrease the coral growth rate uh, and again this is backed up by a few old citations in the literature so the the kind of the proposed big picture mechanism of why we thought that elevated nitrates and phosphates are bad is because if high nitrates and high phosphates increase have a positive effect on algae so uh, the algae in, uh, does well in the presence of nitrates and phosphates uh, but corals and I'm, I'm taking a picture of my acropora here because uh, you know I'm, I'm that's a, a col acropora is something that is known to be very difficult to keep uh, and so we know that high nitrates and phosphates it's they believe to have negative effects on corals especially acropora, uh, acropora. so that results from excess zothanxeli which are the symbi uh, symbiotic algae that live inside of corals uh, you get high browning uh, you get lower growth and calcification rates and, and inhibition of photosynthesis and then a secondary negative effect comes from having thriving algae that could actually outcompete the corals for nutrients as well as space. So uh, under this scenario, uh, it, having high nitrates and phosphates uh, is like a double whammy for corals because it directly inhibits growth and interferes with uh, 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 phosphosynthesis, uh, uh, photosynthesis, but also because it, in, it makes the algae a stronger competitor that could then take over the tank. So that's that's the kind of the proposed mechanism. But here is nitrates in my tank uh, over the past year. So I've I've been running essentially a really dirty tank. Uh, the average uh, uh, nitrates is seven point two parts per million, uh, and um, maximum was twenty five. And if you look at phosphates, you know it, it's the same deal over the past year. I've had an uh, average of 0.2 parts per million, not 0 0.02, but 0 0.2 parts per million, with a maximum of actually 0.68. So if, if this paradigm was true that, you know, high nitrates and high phosphates, the, that should have just killed my tank, right? My tank should have been full of algae and, and no corals. But if you've, if you've been following my tank, my tank is doing great. And, and just to kind of highlight, this is a couple of, uh, coral growth pictures over the past year where I've been running a pretty dirty tank uh, you know this is uh, blueberry wine acro 2000, uh, uh, 2017 a year later this was just like a frag with a couple of branches now it's a, a full-size colony uh, here is my bonsai acropora uh, again a year ago it looked really really awful this was before I was running a dirty tank and I, a year later uh, it's it's fully recovered and it's looking great. This is my uh, uh, passion. Uh, a year ago, it just it was a single frag. Now it's a colony. Uh, so you know, I'm I'm getting coral growth. I'm getting coral correlation uh, col coloration, uh, despite having uh, high phosphates and high nitrates. Uh, and you know, it's it's not just me that has experienced good. Uh, acropora growth and and good coloration in the presence of detectable and 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 what many people would call high phosphates and, and high nitrates uh, other people have well so uh, you know if you j just look at the forums you're, you're gonna see a lot of uh, successful reef keeping that have kept uh, reef keepers that have kept uh, elevated levels of nitrates and phosphates so what why is this how, how could this happen when when you know, like if if you believe the central dogma that high phosphates and high nitrates are bad and they have to be reduced at all costs, then like this this results are just like impossible. So you know, maybe maybe the central dogma that we've all been uh, kind of reefing with for the past year is actually flawed. So maybe elevated nitrates and phosphates are not that. Uh, are not going to affect uh, coral growth or calcification and i started to kind of to appreciate what's out there in terms of science i actually went and i spent a lot of time looking at papers there's about 50 papers that have done uh, that have been carried out uh, on on nutrients and coral growth all done on, on natural uh, reefs uh, actually most of them done on natural reefs 
And I'm going to actually, uh, uh, what I want to discuss today is this uh, uh, a recent paper by uh, Andrew Schantz and uh, Deron Burke. Berkpile, I hope I didn't butcher the name. Uh, they're from uh, the Department of Biology at Florida International University. This paper was recently pu published in 2014 in Ecology. If you're a scientist or a biologist, you know that this is a damn good journal. So the, the, uh, this paper was peer reviewed and 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 uh, and uh, and assessed very rigorously. So what this paper does really nicely is it takes the 50 or so studies that have been done on nutrients, especially uh, nitrates, the nitrogen and phosphorus, uh, and and how it affects coral growth and, and photobiology. And the results of this paper were, were very uh, uh, surprising to say the least and, and illuminating, at least for me. So I'm going to take you through some of the main results. And, and uh, essentially the main results in a nutshell is that the, the few, the, the advice that we've been following uh, is often not the best advice. Uh, so uh, here is uh, figure one from the paper effects on uh, nitrogen phosphor uh, phosphates as well as nitrogen and phosphates enrichment on coral uh, calcification rates. So on the y-axis you have an effect size and you ha if you have a positive number then that means coral uh, in uh, enrichment of that uh, uh, of nitrogen or phosphates will increase calcification. Negative numbers, meaning meaning uh, nutrient enrichment is actually going to reduce calcification. And so for all corals, we see that nitrogen uh, enrichment will actually lead to a significant decrease in calcification. Phosphate enrichment actually increases calcification. So that's opposite to the prevailing wisdom that phosphates are going to limit coral calcification. Uh, but the enrichment of both nitrates and phosphate appears to have no effects on coral. So if you're interested in Acropora, here, here is the panel for you. And uh, nitrogen enrichment does not have any effect on calcification rates on, on uh, Acropora across eight studies. But increasing phosphor, phosphorus or phosphates or phosphorus, uh, actually it's phosphates here, uh, will lead to a, a, a significant increase in calcification rates of Acropora. Uh, having both uh, elevating uh, N and P for the postmark did not have an effect on uh, on uh, Acropora growth. Okay, so here is figure two of uh, the paper, uh, which is the effects of enriching nitrogen phosphates uh, on uh, aspects of the photobiology, and there are several ways to measure this. Uh, the main point here is that uh, enrichment uh, of nitrogen often leads to positive effects on photosynthesis. Uh, Enriching of phosphorus seems to have no effect, uh, and enriching uh, nitrogen and uh, phosph uh, phosphates has a positive effect, but it, you know it's an, uh, only a single study, so it's difficult to extrapolate. So you know we're not seeing negative effects of nutrient enrichment on the, uh, the photosynthesis and and the photobiology uh, of uh, corals. All right, so this is Figure three from their uh, study, and what. Figure three is showing the effect size on coral calcification rate as a function of how nutrients were elevated. And, and the main point here is that if your nutrients are elevated because you have a big, uh, a large fish load, so lots of fish, lots of poop that it, it has naturally, that naturally elevates uh, 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 ammonia, nitrates, uh, uh, as well as uh, phosphates, then that will have the biggest effect, uh, positive effect on coral calcification. So it, it, so the take home point from this is that it, if you have if you're able to keep uh, a high bio load in your tank, then that will give you a, 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 an increase in coral calcification rates than if you were to dose a similar amounts uh, of uh, ammonia or phosphorus independently. So fish poop matters and bio load matters in a, in a positive way. All right, so. Taken together, uh, I think I think it's time that we sh should rethink this paradigm that elevated nitrates and phosphates are bad. So uh, the latest review of the research suggests that it's it's not it's not it's not bad. You know, it could be bad under some uh, circumstances, uh, but often you you do see some positive effects, especially in things like Acropora, uh, and uh, uh, in terms of uh, 
natural uh, fish derived uh, ammonia and, and phosphates often have a positive effect on coral growth. So uh, hopefully uh, this little video was helpful. Uh, you know, it, you, still, you still have to worry about nitrates and phosphates controlling your algae. Uh, in my tank, this is done uh, by just having a really large herbivore population. So I, I have a tang in my tank and tangs are, are very good herbivores, but I also have uh, different uh, types of snails, uh, uh, emerald crabs, hermit crabs, sea urchins. So I, I have a, a a pretty beefy cleanup crew. So so long as my cleanup crew is is selectively eating the algae, then I could get the benefits of high nitrates and phosphates on coral growth without this negative consequences of competition because my herbivores are selectively eating the algae. Okay, so just to kind of close off, I I, I hope that you don't uh, <laughs> I hope that you don't uh, watch this video and then you know unplug your skimmer uh, or stop carbon dosing or or uh, implement any uh, sudden change in in your husbandry. Uh, I'm I'm just putting out this video out there just to kind of discuss this new research that that was done and to also generate kind of a, a hopefully a bigger discussion. Uh, that that is that should inform us a little bit more about the value of nitrates uh, and phosphates in our tank and 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 hopefully go away from from the the, the just the blind central dogma nitrates phosphates bad must apply GFO and and carbon dosing and so on to keep these levels at undetectable. Okay, uh, that's it, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, interesting to uh, I'm I'll be looking forward to uh, the comment section. <laughs> I'm sure there's gonna be quite a few uh, uh, a few people that disagree with me, but uh, let's let's you know let's have this discussion. All right, have a good one and bye.